He survived tragedy and depression to become America's greatest ever president. He had the courage to destroy slavery, but it took a civil war and the loss of 600,000 lives. His beliefs cost him his life, but without him, the United States of America would not exist today. Abraham Lincoln, America's model hero. The man whose courage and brilliant strategy saved a nation from destruction. But for a man who reached such lofty heights, his early life was poor and brutal. He was born on the 12th of February, 1809, in a one-room cabin in rural Kentucky, a frontier state of America. His family were farmers, and although he was taught to work the land, nothing would make him enjoy it. Tall, gangly, and ferociously intelligent, he was the first of his family to read, and his preference for books over manual labor made him stand out. Even as a child, Abraham Lincoln was different to his friends. The young Lincoln was uh, a child of endless curiosity. He loved to hear people give uh, well-crafted, well-delivered speeches. He would often go to places where such speeches were being made. He'd memorize parts of them, come back and give those speeches to his playmates. It was in Lincoln's nature to embrace new experiences. And when he was 19, he grabbed the opportunity to travel 1,200 miles down the Mississippi River. It was a journey that would change his outlook on life forever. He was confronted by the realities of slavery. What he did see in New Orleans was probably the most horrific aspect of slavery, and that was the destruction of slave families at auction, the selling of slaves, and the use of slaves literally as pieces of commerce. Lincoln, too, had felt like a slave, having been forced to pay all his wages to his father until he was 21. But when he returned to the North, Lincoln left the family home, striking out to the most exciting town of its day, New Salem, Illinois. Here, he would be his own man. When he came to New Salem, that was a deliberate choice on his part, to turn his back on the world of farming, the agrarian lifestyle that was being so romanticized in the 19th century. And coming to New Salem was really a deliberate choice to plunge himself into the world of 19th century commerce, capitalism, the Industrial Revolution, and everything like that. Lincoln's passion for reading continued into his adult life. Studying the great writers of the day, his ideas about fairness were becoming increasingly developed. America was changing, expanding day by day, and Lincoln wanted to be part of it. By 1837, he had studied enough to pass the bar examination. He had decided to become a lawyer. It also plunged him into the world of politics, and politics he loved even more than law. It might be said, I think, with, uh, with some truth, that for him, law was a means to politics, and his practice as a lawyer was always bound up with his political ambitions. In New Salem, he met a woman called Anne Rutledge, and a romance quickly blossomed. But Lincoln's life took a tragic turn when Anne died of a fever aged only 22. Her death plunged Lincoln into a deep depression that recurred throughout his life. But hard work overcame these black spells. He had become a successful local politician, and the ambitious young Lincoln was proving difficult to ignore. He might look awkward, he might look ill-dressed, he might sound uncouth, but once Lincoln began to speak, the power of his logic explaining issues, his capacity to reach out and touch the common man with his immense fund of stories and illustrations. These were things that marked him right away to those who met him as a, as a young man of extraordinary promise and talent. Lincoln quickly established himself as a charismatic speaker and talented politician. Increasingly ambitious, he decided to move again. Leaving New Salem, he went to live in Springfield, the state capital of Illinois. There he met and married a wealthy and well-connected young woman called Mary Ann Todd. Her family was well-established, well-to-do, slave-holding family. 
Um, she took a little grief from her friends and some of her relatives about being involved with Abraham Lincoln, this kind of rough, admittedly interesting and attractive and funny young man, but certainly not her social equal. Lincoln moved onto the national stage, becoming a congressman for his district of Illinois. It was a tense time in America. The country was uneasily divided into 15 free and 15 slave states. When Kansas wanted to join the Union, a fierce debate raged. Should it be a slave state or not? Small-scale wheat farmers did not want to compete with slaves working for their masters. In the South, it was another commodity that was key to the slave issue, cotton. By 1840, cotton was more valuable than everything else the United States of America exported put together. By 1860, the value of slaves, or about four million slaves by 1860, and the value of those slaves was greater than the value of all the American railroads, all the American manufacturing, all the American banking put together. Slavery was not a sideshow in the American drama. It was the main event. Lincoln had always been opposed to slavery. He found slavery repugnant because slavery was a contradiction of his yearning for transformation and self-improvement. The predicament that he faced was that slavery was an enactment of the states where it was legalized. Therefore, the federal government had no authority to pass any kind of statute touching on slavery. In 1858, Abraham Lincoln decided to run for the United States Senate. At the beginning of the campaign, he made a speech that inflamed the nation. In my opinion, it will not cease. The United States was a house, but a house divided by slavery. A house divided against itself cannot stand. To survive, it would have to be either all free or all slave. Be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall. Abraham Lincoln had unintentionally raised the specter of civil war. It will become all one thing or all the other. Lincoln lost the election to the Senate. His opponent in the race, Stephen A. Douglas, had painted him as an abolitionist, recklessly determined to stamp out slavery. But the high-profile Douglas had unwittingly helped Lincoln gain national prominence. People in the East were so concerned about what Douglas's fate was going to be that Douglas's speeches are reprinted word for word in the Eastern newspapers. Well, of course, as they reprint Douglas's speeches, they have to reprint Lincoln's replies to them in the debates. And suddenly people are reading not only Douglas, but this man Lincoln. And so the headlines begin to run. The prairies are on fire. And people begin to ask Lincoln's friends in the East, you're from Illinois, do you know this man Lincoln who has debated Douglas? Lincoln continued his incredible rise to prominence. By 1860, the unlikely-looking boy from rural Kentucky was being talked about as presidential material. He scoffed at it. Imagine, he said, a sucker like me as president. However, as more and more people talked to him about it, and more and more people promised support, he did admit, the taste is in my mouth a little. As his support grew, Abraham Lincoln decided to run for the presidency. After a long campaign, and with the opposition in disarray, he was successfully elected. 